Welcome today to Formulating for Reds and Brunettes. Today what we're going to cover, our agenda, is going to be color theory and how it plays a significant role in color formulation. We're going to spend a lot of time today actually getting into the structure of the hair, how color theory really truly works, your natural remaining pigments, so you have the best color formulations possible. We'll spend time with your exploration of the proper questions that you want to ask during a client consultation, as well as understanding how to customize blend the GK Oil hair color so you can get the most natural looking brunettes, cool brunettes, and violet, uh, vibrant reds with the color line. When we talk about color theory, some of the things that we really want to remember when we talk about this is the primary colors. Now our primary colors, of course, being your red, yellow, and blue, those are not achieved by mixing any of their colors together. So when we talk about our red, our yellow, and our blue, these are not just a combination of creating brown, but we're really going to explore how red, yellow, and blue play into the hair that you have on your client's head doing your color formulations. When you mix your reds and your yellows and your blues together, that combination is going to create our brown. When we talk about our neutrals and our neutral neutral series with our color line, what we're talking about, each one of those, the natural series, the natural natural, what those are is an equal combination of one part yellow, one part red, and one part blue. A lot of this is a bit of, um, we're going back to what we talked about the last three classes, but this is really very important for us to remember during our color formulations. Understanding your primary colors. It's more than blue plus red plus yellow equals brown. Um, let's delve into a little bit with our colors when we talk about blue colors. Blue colors, those are your coolest tones. So anytime that you add blue to a color formula, that's the coolest that you can make it. When we talk about our blue, blue absorbs light. So blue automatically is going to make your color formulas more opaque. So adding blue to gray coverage formulas, adding blue to your brunettes from a, a level two all the way up to a six is going to absorb the light. and It's going to give you that depth that your clients are looking for. And again, when we talk about our blue color, that's the larger molecule. So the blue tends to wash out faster. So when we talk about customized blending with our colors, we have to make sure that we have background color. We've anchored that blue in so we don't lose that blue quickly. When we talk about our red, our reds, what those are gonna to deliver to your color formulas, those are gonna create warm tones. So anytime that there's red, that's gonna give you warm. Adding red to color formulas will take your color formula and make it richer, give it more substance to that. So you may not be making a red and color, but what you'll do is you make it nice and rich. When we talk about those red molecules, red is the second largest molecule and those tend to rinse out faster. If anybody's ever been a redhead, you know that, that fades the quickest. So when we talk about red, it's not just the red that you're putting in your color bowl, but it's also the red that's in the hair naturally. So we're gonna talk a lot about how we're going to use natural remaining pigment, which is your red, and playing off that red, because that's the red that doesn't fade. So a lot of our formulation is gonna come from the red that's already present in your hair. And then finally, that third primary color is being our yellow. Our yellow, again, is another warm tone. So anytime yellow is present in the color formula, it's gonna be nice and warm. When you choose to add yellows to your color formulas, uh, what you're gonna get from that is lighter colors and brighter shades. So anytime you wanna intensify a shade, make it brighter, um, you wanna make sure that you're adding your yellow. While we talk about the colors um, compared to our swatch book with GK Oil Hair Color, and we talk about primary colors, yellow and gold are synonymous with each other. So if I say yellow and you're translating that to the swatch book, that's gold because the gold in the GK Oil Hair Color series is a true yellow. Um, so, you know, again, we're going to talk about natural remaining pigment. And when you want to see yellow in your, uh, the hair that's in your, on your client's head, we're going to talk about how that's going to increase making brighter and more vibrant colors. And as you all know, if you've ever done color removal, yellow is the hardest color to remove from the hair. So all of these things to understand what the primary colors are doing in your hair, the blue, the red, and the yellow. So I really can't stress to you enough that when we look at our color concentrates, the additive pure tone colors of red, yellow, blue, and of course violet, those are, those are essential for creating the perfect color formulations for your brunettes and for your redheads. Now we're gonna talk about your natural hair color. And natural hair color is what's growing out of your client's head and how the primary colors are playing into that right away. 
Um, so everybody's hair has different varying primary colors and this is something that we need to be very cognizant about when formulating for pure tone colors because the natural hair, again, we call that our master color formula. It's what's the remaining on the head, the natural remaining pigment, plus what you put in the bowl is gonna give you your end result. So when we talk about black hair, so we're talking about the hair that's the darkest pigment. And of course there's variations, you know, you've got the darkest of black going up to maybe like a level two where it's, if you, if you, if you want to call it a lighter black, that's going to be three parts blue, three parts red, and three parts yellow. So when you're talking about natural black hair, those are the three fundamental primary colors that are found in that hair. So if you are formulating to create blacks, your darkest colors, you need to make sure that your color formula represents three parts blue, three parts red, and three parts yellow. When we talk about brown hair, and of course, brown is that spectrum from a level four all the way up to level seven. Depends on, you know, again, the texture of the hair, but we're in that brown category. The perfect brown formulas are going to mimic what the natural hair is like, and that natural hair is one part blue, two parts red, and three parts yellow. So to have a true brown, you need to make sure that your color formula represents those parts, the primary colors. Again, one part blue, two parts red, and three parts yellow. Now when we talk about red hair, red hair, um, again, falling in that range of a five to a, I would say a six, because that's where your true red zone's gonna be, maybe a four to a six, that red hair is going to need two parts uh, red and three parts yellow. Again, to have those perfect red formulas, these are the formulas that do not fade, that look the most natural, uh, and that have the longevity to last a long time, two parts red and three parts yellow. And then when we talk about blonde hair, of course there's different spectrums of blonde. There's your dark blonde, which could be about your level six to a seven. Then you have your blonde, seven to a nine. And then you have your pale yellow, which may be a nine to a 10. Um, so those blonde hairs, those are made out of three parts yellow if it's a dark blonde, two parts yellow if it's a medium blonde, and one part yellow if it's a pale blonde. Again, when you're achieving these colors, when you're making your, your formulations, you want to make sure your natural remaining pigment that you have in the hair is significantly going to play to your end color formula. So you want to make sure your formulations are going to mirror what natural hair color is made up. Um, again, with pure tone colors, you are the chemist, you are the colorist, and you can make anything that you want to with these colors, bearing in mind exactly what the hair needs to be the truest color. Uh, when we talk about our secondary and tertiary colors, and I always like to review this, we talk color theory all the time, but to really be cognizant of what these colors are made out of. When we talk about secondary colors, how you make a secondary color is by mixing two of your primary colors. So when you want to make green, it's yellow and blue. When you want to make orange, it's red and yellow. And when you want to make violet, it's red and blue. When you look at the color swatch book, under the color concentrates, we have all three primary colors. There's the red, there's the blue, and there's yellow, but there's also a fourth one that was added, which is the violet. And that's not a primary, that's a secondary. And the reason that the violet was added to that is so that you were able to create violet tone colors without the heaviness of the blue. So that one was created for you, so that way there would be some balance between the red and the blue. Because when you're mixing your own red and blue, Sometimes if your blue is a little too heavy, you darken that color, you make it a little too opaque. So that's why violet was added to our color swatch book. So those are your secondary colors. When we talk about our tertiary colors, those are made by mixing one primary with a secondary color. So when you're making your red orange, that's red plus orange, but bear in mind, how did you make orange? That's red and yellow. So when we talk about red orange, it's really two parts red and one part yellow. So when you're making your color formulas, when you're doing your custom blending with GK, be very cognizant of if you're making red orange, so you, maybe you're making your copper colors, you wanna make sure you have one red, and then when you make your orange, another red and a yellow. So that's truly what's gonna make up your copper colors. So again, really getting into the basics of understanding how color theory works. When we talk about making yellow orange, that's yellow with orange. And again, how do we make orange? That's red and yellow. So you've got two yellows and one red. So do you see how we're playing into your primary colors? So I really want you guys thinking about how these colors are working as you're doing your formulations. When we're making yellow green, 
It's yellow and green, of course. And so how do you make your green? Green is yellow plus blue. So you're having two yellows with one blue. So that blue is adding a bit of opaque to it. And then you've got two yellows, which is making it brighter. So you can use yellow green when you're level seven and higher. When you want to make your blue green, that's blue plus green. So now what you've got is two blues and you've got um, a yellow. So you're getting a little bit stronger with color pigment, more opaque, a little heavier color formula with that one. And then your blue violet, of course, how do you make violet? That's red plus a blue, so that's two blues and one red. Again, very heavy formulas, those happen at a level five and lower. And then your red violet, uh, so that's red plus your violet, again, that's two reds and one blue. So you can really see how this color wheel is playing into this. And this is how I want you all to think when you're doing your color formulations for GK. So when we talk about your complementary colors and why they're important, and you know, every time we have one of these color classes, we're looking at the color wheel. Um, it really is simple as the color wheel. Um, and just thinking about how color is. So complementary colors, we use those because they refine or they neutralize out each other. So that's one of the things that we need to know when creating our color formulas. When we get to the level that we want and we're creating that formula, are we going to enhance or are we going to neutralize when we get there? Um, and then, you know, with these complementary colors, it helps us understand the results as a series when you start mixing things together. So again, with GK Oil Hair Color being 51 total bottles, it's not like your traditional color that you're used to where you have mahogany violets and you have caramels and warm caramels. There are no series in that line like this because you have pure tones. But when you understand how these colors play off of each other, then you are in complete control of how you're going to create your own series. So, I mean, how many of you uh, in your salons, when you've had ammonia pre-mixed colors before pre-blended, you've had maybe an entire series of colors that you never used? And so now this eliminates the waste of extra colors that you don't use very often because you can create exactly what it is that you're looking for. And when we talk about um, what complements each other, super important during consultations because it's not just about the hair. I watch it happen all the time when you get so excited you finally found that client who wants to be that really intense redhead or the orange or those really fun colors that we want to make all the time. But we forget to look at her skin tone, we forget to look at what she wears, we forget to look at her makeup and we realize those colors all play into each other because that too is what's going to set you apart from other colorists that are around you is that you have a full total understanding of color not just in the hair not just what you're mixing, but the complete package of that client that walks through the door. An accurate color formula takes into account your NRP, again, which is your natural remaining pigment. That natural remaining pigment chart, as you know, is found on the back of our swatch book. Um, and so when we talk about NRP, we want to talk about what the hair is leaving behind as we're lifting up. So this is a slide that we all saw during the blonding program, those 10 degrees of decolorization. So when we think about decolorization, we think about putting bleach on the hair and lifting it up to the color that we want. But on the flip side of the coin of that, when we're maybe we're making a brunette or we're making a redhead and we're going from level six to maybe a level eight. So how many levels of lift is a six to an eight? Six, seven, eight, so that's three levels of lift. So if we're doing three levels of lift, we need to know we're decolorizing. So we're changing what we're leaving behind. So you may start in the red zone with your client with her natural remaining pigment when you look at that, but as you put 30 volume on and you lift it higher, now you're going to be um, in your yellow gold zone. So you have to take into account what is going to be left behind with the developer choice that you're using when you're lifting the levels of the hair. So you need to be very cognizant as you're lifting up what you're leaving behind. With these two charts uh, next to each other, as we're lifting up, you know, those degrees of decolorization with pale yellow being 10 and dark red brown being a one, as we go through those series, that's what you're leaving behind and that's what you know is part of your color formula, whether you like it or not. So your natural remaining pigment plays a major role in your color formulation. When you're using an oxidative color, NRP always plays a role in that. In GK Oil Hair Color, everything in the line is oxidative. So even when you're using your eight volume, that's oxidative. So that's gonna play a significant role in your formula. Um, your NRP is going to contribute to the final color result. So we spent a little time talking about how that's gonna, that's gonna be in that color formula. So you need to take into account what you're leaving behind when you mix your color. Colored hair 
is always a combination of your natural remaining pigment and the tone that you put in the, that you apply to the hair. So what you have on the hair, what you put in the bowl, that's what's going to be your end result. And you know, of course, as we're lifting and we're using oxidation, warm colors are always the result of that. So you never lift to an ash, you never lift to a cool or a blue or a green. So warm colors are always the result of oxidation, which really works out well because when we talk about red formulas, when we talk about brunette formulas, red formulas should always play off of the NRP. So use that to your advantage because that's what's going to keep the hair, keep your reds lasting longer. Um, so when we talk about NRP with redheads, make sure you're not lifting it up too high. Maybe you just want to lift it up one level to keep it in your red, your red orange zone or your orange zone depending if you're going copper. So be very cognizant of where you're lifting that to. Um, colorist, once you get your NRP, there's only two things that you can do with it. You can only neutralize it or you can enhance it. So again, may, be very aware of where you're taking your NRP. Now, knowing how to create the desired NRP will be the deciding factor for hair color success. So again, you know, when we talk about making a redhead, and so you want to, you want to have somebody who is a level six red, so in a medium area, you don't want to lift them any higher than an orange because you need those colors to play back into it. So again, as we lift through, know exactly where that's going to be so you can use that as part of your color formula. Now, you, I call this the master color formula. The master color formula never changes. So when you're thinking about your color formula, it's your NRP plus the color in the bowl equals the final result. And so there's nothing that we can change. So the consistent, what's always consistent is your NRP. So you really need to pay attention to what you're asking your level of your hair to do. Now, when we're doing our formulations for brunettes and reds, we also have to take into account not just your natural rainy pigment, we also have to know how much, what are we gonna do with the gray hair? Because a lot of clients that walk through the door wanna be brunette when they have gray hair. So that's gonna play in a major part of the clients walking through the door. And then you're gonna have a significant percentage of clients who are gonna wanna be redheads. So we need to understand what gray hair does in a color formula. So gray hair, always remember, it tends to have the lightest form of the primary colors. So, or it might even be missing primary colors. So it has the lightest forms of your reds, your yellows, and your blue. So to create the perfect color formula when you're covering gray, you need to make sure you're replacing your primary colors back into the hair. So a gray color formula has to have red, it has to have yellow, and it has to have blue in there. When we're using our GK oil hair color, always remember that your mixing ratio is always a one-to-one, -one, and processing time is key with the GK oil hair color. Um, but you have to leave your gray coverage on for 45 minutes. The color line is significantly lower in pH than the ammonia hair color. GK oil hair color is a 9 to a 10 and a 10.9. So that's a lot lower than ammonia. So that's taking a little bit extra time to open the cuticle, a little extra time to get the NRP exposed. That last 10 to 15 minutes of processing time for your gray, for your redheads, that's when those color molecules are linking together, that's when they're oxidizing, that's when you get the true tone that you've asked for. Um, for your most resistant grays, a tip that we do have when we cover this in our gray series is you always want to take one step down in your NN because it goes something along with what the dye load is. So you want to make sure you're having enough of the reds, enough of the yellows, enough of the blues to replace what's missing in your gray hair. So those resistant hairs. And you all know that when your client walks to the door and she has gray hair, she knows if she's resistant or not. She'll tell you. Um, and when we look at how you're creating your color formulations for gray, you always want to bear in mind that with your gray hair, the percentage of gray that your client has is a direct correlation to the amount of NN that you're going to use in your color formula. So by looking at this chart that you see, um, if your client has 25% gray hair, you're going to use 25% of your color formula is going to be NN, and that leaves you 75% of the desired color that, you're, uh, that you'd like to make. I um, mean, you're going to use 20 volume uh, for your gray coverage. When you've got a client who's 50% gray, 50% of your color formula will consist of your NN series. That leaves you 50% to do what you want with the color formula. So if you want to make her brunette, you want to make her a cool, um, a cool brunette, warm brunette, you want to make her a redhead. Um, so that gives you a, what you can play with at 50%. Now the volumes change on the developers. 
So if you if you have somebody who is resistant hair or they have a lot of gray hair that sometimes is a hard time covering, you can always step up in your volume. You can go from a 20 to a 30, but if you go to a 30, you might want to step down in your level with your NN. So for example, if your client is a six, a level six, but they have resistant hair and you want 100% gray coverage that's opaque, you're gonna have to increase your volume of developer from a 20 to a 30, but instead of using your 6NN like you normally would, if you use 20 volume, you're gonna use 5NN with a 30 volume, so that way you're gonna get a nice true opaque coverage because it increases the dye load as it's lifting up. Now, for those clients that are 50 to 100% gray, 75% of your color formula is going to be NNs, which gives you 25% where you are able to, um, to create desired tones. And then of course, whether you're using 20 volume or 30 volume, the same rule applies. If you're gonna use 30 volume because they have resistant hair, then you're gonna lower your level of NN down. Again, if it's a six NN, you're gonna step that down to a five NN and increase your developer to a 30. So you always have to have a direct correlation between the level that you're choosing and the developer that you're using. But if you use these rules, and you follow them with a proper application technique where you're patting the gel color on, you will have 100% gray coverage every single time. Now, when we were talking about stepping down with your levels when you increase your developers, the graph that you're looking at now, it really gets key to understanding what the dye load is when you're covering gray hair or really when you're doing any type of color formulation. When you're thinking about a level one color, whether that's 1N, when you think about dye load, the dye load is completely full. So you have maximum amount of dye load that's why there's no 1NN because there's no need for it because the 1N is completely full dye load. Then when you go to your 2, it's slightly less than your 1. You go to your 3, it's a little less than your 2 and it progressively changes, a little less dye load as you go up the levels to when you go to a level 10, which has the least amount of dye load in there. And that's why the level 10s in the GK line, the line being translucent first until you create your own opaque coverage. That's why 10s make a beautiful toner, 12s make an amazing toner, because the dye load's very light. Now, if you're going for gray coverage, and your client is a natural level 10, you're definitely gonna have to step down to a nine or an eight and increase your developer to a 30 because you need to have enough dye load because remember when we started talking about gray, gray hair is missing the primary colors. It's missing the reds, the yellows, and the blue. And at a level 10, and sometimes at a level nine, if the hair is medium to coarse, there's not enough color pigment in that dye to give you 100% opaque gray coverage. So, you know, bearing in mind how much is in each level of color of the dye load is going to significantly change how you're coloring the hair of your clients with a pure tone color. Now, if you were in levels five, six, and seven, or even in a four, when we're talking about those kind of levels, to increase your dye load, what you can do is use the color additives. So you can use the blue, the gold, the red, or the violet. You can use those and put those in levels four, five, six. Uh, that, what that's gonna do, that's gonna make that dye load heavier. So the dye load will still be at a level four, It'll still be a color of a four, it's still the tone, but it'll have a dye load more of like a two. So it's a little bit heavier. So what that means to you as a hair colorist is that color will be opaque. So it'll be very similar to what you're used to working with when you're talking about ammonia hair colors. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense, just kind of getting into the background of how the color uh, dye load is. Now, when we talk about tonal families, um, the chart that you're looking at now has tonal families that we currently have and what your tonal result is. But then you, you as a colorist, because it's pure tone, can create your own tonal families. So as we walk through this, when we look at our, again, our natural and our natural natural, uh, those are make, made up of equal parts of your primary colors. Your ash, which is your blue-green base, that one is the coolest of all the series. So that's what you're gonna use when you're um, creating cool colors and you have your NRP is warm. So that's what's gonna help you cool it back down along with using the blue concentrate or the blue and the yellow concentrate if you're creating a green. Um, our gold creates a golden, a golden finish to the hair. Again, it's yellow, so that makes it really bright, very warm. Um, now when you wanna start creating your own series, you wanna create a, a gold, a soft golden, you're gonna mix gold with your neutral together. So it's gonna give you nice neutral brunettes. You wanna create a soft beige gold, you wanna mix your complete opposites with each other. So you mix gold and you're gonna mix ash. So that's gonna give you nice beige brunettes. 
Um, when we talk about our copper and our red, red orange, those are going to give you warmth again because your coppers, those have those that has yellow in there. That's red and yellow that creates brighter and warmer. Um, the red, red, red series that we have is where you get your cool red. So it's, it's, it's not a cool, but it's a true red. So it really is truly red. That's why it's between levels four and six. Your red violet, that's what's going to give you cool red. Um, because that red violet's made out of red and it's made out of blue. And blue, what does blue do to your formulas? It cools them down. So this is a nice cool red. So you're not going to get really an eggplant or mahogany with the red violet directly from the swatch book. You're getting a cool red. So you'll have to make your own mahogany. So we'll talk about that in a second. And then finally, we talk about our intense coppers and our intense reds. Those are going to deliver your brightest, warmest red tones. Again, because it's pure tone, you can create what you want to, but these are the most popular tonal series that are happening in the color uh, market today. So we're going to start off with caramel, because who doesn't get asked for that? Caramel happens best between a level five and an eight, of course, because you want the warmth from your NRP. You need that orange. You need those tones to release so you can create these. To create those with our GK Oil Color Series, you're going to mix that with a gold and a violet. So gold and a violet, and that's going to create a nice neutral for you. So when we're looking at this conversion chart, um, the, the first color that you see, so when we talk about gold and violet, gold is your lead color, violet is your secondary series. So there would be more gold than there would be a violet in there. You can adjust the amount according to the texture of the hair, whether it's fine, it's medium or it's coarse, how intense you want to see it. So this really truly becomes an artist's palette. This is a rough draft for you to create the series shades that you're looking for. Now we talk about a warm caramel. Again, that happens between a five and an eight. And you want to create a nice warm, nice, those nice, really warm, rich colors. Um, you're going to use the natural series mixed with a copper series. So those two combine together. And when we think about the natural series, when we really break it down, what you're putting is one part yellow, one part red, and one part blue. Then we break down copper and copper, what is copper? Copper is your red and your orange. You get another part red, two more parts red, and one part yellow. So that's how you're creating your warm copper. So that's a very warm formula. Those yellows in there are making it nice and vibrant and bright. Uh, copper gold. This is a very popular shade between levels of six and nine. Um, copper is going to be your lead series that you're going to use. And then your gold is going to be your secondary series. And that's going to create your, uh, your copper gold. Your red copper is again between levels of five and eight. So your red copper, it's going to be your red, red series with your intense copper. That's going to create your brightest warm. Um, again, that intense copper, that's the OR, so you're getting your yellows in there. Again, that's what's giving you the brightness to your formula. And then you've got your reds, and then your natural remaining pig between levels of five and eight are playing into that formula as well. Um, another very popular series is mahogany, mahogany red. Those happen between level four and five. Once you come higher than a five, they're not mahoganies anymore because you need the depth and deepness of having blue to give you that those mahoganies. So your lead series with GK Oil Hair Color is going to be your Red Violet series. And then that's going to be followed with your Red Red, which is the truest red. So we're adding some more red to that. And then the Violet Concentrate. So that combination of those three colors is going to give you your mahogany red series. We talk about red violets. Um, those happen between levels four and six. And your lead color series is going to be red, red. So again, you're true red. And we're in the levels of four to six. So that's when real red happens. So you're getting red from your natural remaining pigment. You're getting red, red from your color series. Then we're going to add in violet concentrate to that. So your violet concentrate, of course, that's a combination of what? That's red and blue. So blue is going to give it that depth. It's going to give it that little bit of coolness to that with another red added. And then we're going to finish that off with the last part of the series being our red violet. Again, so you're getting a little bit more of the blue, a little bit more of the red. So do you see how those are all creating your own series, which eliminates the need to have all those extra bottles on your shelf. And then finally, um, the last one that is a popular one is your violet natural. And that happens between levels three and five. And your violet natural is actually your violet color concentrate as your lead and your natural series as your secondary. So combining that to create what you're looking for. Um, and that is going to create you a nice neutral. One of my favorite ones that's not on here, especially for gray, for fantastic gray coverage, um, is your lead color being your blue concentrate. Um, and if you're in the levels of one, two, of six, 
So you have your blue concentrate as your lead and your natural or your natural natural series as your secondary. Equal portions of those create enough, enough um, opaqueness and enough absorbing of the light so you get a true, really great gray coverage and it's a nice cool brunette because you know, clients are looking for cool brunettes so you have the power to cool down your brunette formulas, to really play with those colors, to get them exactly what your clients are looking for. You can't get that with a pre-blended color from another product line. So then your second step for successful formulation for your reds and your browns is going to be your client consultation. This is the most important thing, is to understand what your client's asking for. Um, you know, especially when you talk about redheads and browns. They, you know, I want it to be this color, but is that the color that they're really looking for? To really understand whether you are looking through magazines, uh, looking at the swatches, to really understand what's too brassy, what's warm, what's cool, what's mahogany. All of those, I call those danger words, because the client doesn't necessarily know what they are. So really have a good consultation to know exactly what they're looking for. Um, understanding past color experiences. This is really gonna help you really understand what they're saying because, you know, tell me the favorite hair color you've ever had, tell me the worst hair color you've ever had. Questions like that are gonna help answer the first question that you ask. Percentage of gray is a huge one. You need to know how much gray there is. A lot of times when hairdressers are doing formulations, they think the client has a percentage of gray and actually they were off by percentage. So really analyze the hair, truly know how much gray the client has because this is going to be key. And sometimes if a client has too much gray, 75% or higher, and she wants to be a bright redhead, one that may not go with her skin tone because usually clients who have that much gray hair are a little bit older and that those bright colors don't play well off their faces. And two, there's a trade-off to get full gray coverage or you want to have really bright red hair. So, you know, this is really going to play into what the client can and cannot have. Another really great question that you need to know is do they want to have translucent coverage or opaque coverage? Again, remember the GK Oil hair color line is mostly trans, it is translucent because it's pure tone. You as the colorist will make it opaque. And so a lot of clients love to have translucent coverage. Semi-permanent color category is the hottest category right now. This is the category that's most in demand, that has the highest growth percentage over the last two years. But your client needs to know what they're gonna get. So if she's expecting 100% complete coverage on gray, you need to know if it's opaque or it's translucent. So you have that conversation with the client so they know what they're managing expectations. Um, of course, some of those questions you want to ask is if the color that you already have on your hair, is it salon color or is it at home color? Because that's really going to play into it a lot. To me, the hardest color to do in the salon is somebody who was already previously colored at levels one through four and they just want to go to a six. As you guys know, that's, that's complete color correction that we'll get into in our next series, but that's the hardest color to do. So you need to know exactly what you're working with. And then of course you want to choose the correct shade that complements their skin tone and you want to manage their expectations so they have realistic expectations and they understand what the upkeep and the maintenance is at home. Um, so if you have a client who wants to be a fiery redhead, she is going to have to know what she's going to expect to be a redhead. The best redheads are made by doing a color formula first, shampooing it out, lightly drying it, and then putting a semi-permanent glaze over top of it to lock the color in. So is she prepared to spend the money to be that fiery redhead? And do you have enough time to make her the redhead that's gonna last, that's gonna increase your books? GK Oil Hair Color. When we talk about this, it requires custom blending for hair color success. GK Oil Hair Color is not a one bottle solution to hair color. You really, again, have to analyze what you, the makeup of the hair is, what those primary colors are, what your end objective is, and custom blend your own. So this custom blending allows you to create your own blended formulas. And the unique thing about the GK Oil Hair Color is, any client can walk into your salon with a color formula from any of the ammonia competitors out there. And you as a hair colorist can make that easy with GK Oil Hair Color. But if a GK Oil Hair Color client walked into another salon, they would not be able to recreate it because you are you created that formula, you created that pure tone yourself. So it's your own blend, which increases your clientele. So remember, it is a pure tone color, maximum creativity with minimal colors, 
and you are in complete control of the tone, the lightening, and the depositing of the color. You also have complete control over whether it's going to be translucent or it's going to be opaque. And the nice thing with that is because you have control of how that color is going to deposit, what it's going to look like, you can make it look as natural as you want to, or you can make it look as high fashion and intense as you'd like as well. Now, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on formulating your colors when we talk about your neutral and your natural and your natural natural series. Those are used when you want to give other tones the necessary depth and warmth within their color formulations. It's what I call the anchor to the formula. You're going to use your natural and your natural natural series when you're missing warmth from the hair. So that's your gray hair. You absolutely have to use natural or natural natural for gray, not just for gray coverage, but for good natural looking gray hair, um, you know, with its artificial color. You really have to have those three primaries in there. Um, you have to use your N and your NN series for hair that's very light naturally because they're, they have the lightest forms as well of the three primaries. And you absolutely have to use the N and the NN series on pre-lightened hair so it has something to hang on to. So what do I really mean about you have to use N or NN when you have pre-lightened hair? If you're going to make a toner, and remember, Still, you're going to say you want a tone with 10 VB. You want it to be a nice ash toner. You're going to use eight volume uh, to make it a semi-permanent color. If you use that and you just use the 10 VB, it's going to have a bit of a hollow effect. It's going to be very translucent and it's not going to last as long as you intended it to because there was nothing for it to stick onto with that pre-lightened hair. So if you're going to use um, on pre-lightened hair, you're going to use for as a toner, you need to use a little bit of your end to give it an anchor, give it a base for it to hang on to something. So for example, if you used um, 20 ml of 10 VB, you would want to use 5 ml. So you want to use a fourth of that formula, really is what it comes down to. One fourth of that formula is going to be an N. And so, you know, whether you use a 9N or a, I would recommend a 9N because it's got a little bit more dye load with a 10VB and your 8 semi-permanent developer, that's going to give it that anchor to hang on to. It's going to, it's going to give you your red, your yellow, and your blue because that's what it's missing. And that's what's going to hold on to. Those colors that you're used to using with an ammonia color already have that N built into it. So you're building that N in there. So that's when you're going to want to use your N series. Again, it's giving you that background color. That background color is going to give you those opaque results. When I look at hair colors that are done by um, Jewel Hair Color and you're not using ends in your colors, let's say reds for example. Um, if you were using any other color line out there that was an ammonia color line and you were making a red formula, you would never put in a neutral or a natural color because that would brown out your red because that red pre-mixed color that you already had from the two already has that N in there. So when, if you color hair like you always did with the GK line, when you put that red on without that natural color, it, like again, it, I, for lack of better words, it looks hollow and it doesn't last as long. So even in your red, you need to put a little bit of your N in so it has that anchor so it can hang on and give that opaque result. So for an example, we're going to create depth with an intense redhead. And here's a sample formula of what we use, what, what I mean when I say creating that anchor to hang on to. Um, so to create that intense redhead, we would use 20 ml of our formula would be 6N, that's yellow, red, and blue. That's going to help it hang on. So red's going to contribute to the red, the yellow's going to contribute to the brightness, and the blue is going to give it that sticky power, that background color that it needs. Then we're going to use 20 ml of intense 5RR. 20 ml of Intense 7 RR and 10 ml of Intense 6 OR. So you have 50 ml of your red formula and 20 ml of your um, of your natural to hold on to it. So does that make sense? You're gonna build in your background color. Uh, you want to mix. Another reason that you would use your N or your NN series is you want to mix in the formulas to kind of subdue the intensity of the color, to make them look a little softer. And so say you want to create a soft golden color. Um, so you would use 20 ml of a 12 YO because it's a beautiful gold color. And then you would use 10 ml of a 9 YO and 10 ml of a 9N. And so when you look at that formula, you have 30 ml 
of your, 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 of your golden color. So you've got 12 and you've got a nine combining together to give you um, a beautiful golden color. It's at 30 ml. So one third of that formula was a nine N to give it the yellow, the red, and the blue. So to give it that background color, to soften it out and give it a nice golden color and to give it that longevity that it needs. When you're talking about creating a red base, and you want your reds, you want to give them everything that they need to ensure that they last longer and have a nice, rich looking color. So remember, red is the primary color, and you can mix that with either or both of the other primary colors to give you a nice base. So your example for this is to create a lighter red or a red gold, is you want to take a red plus a yellow is going to equal a light golden red. So for example, you take 20 ml of your six red red and 20 ml of 3-3, which is gold concentrate. Those are in equal portions to each other. Now another example for you is if you're at levels ranging from a six all the way to a level nine, so we're talking about your medium uh, gold reds or your red or your strawberry um, apricot colors. Um, another great color formula so you have an understanding of how you're going to create your own series. You would use 20 ml of a 9YO, which is gold, 10 ml of 8OR, and then you would use 5 ml of your 66, which is your red. So you're going to get that nice those, those apricots, those strawberries, and those goldens, and what you're going to add to this formula to give it that background color. So which level of N do you think that you would use? I would use a 9. I would use 9N, and I would use probably about 5 ml of 9N because um, your 6-6, six, six, because it's a pure tone concentrate, is going to add a little bit more depth and deepness to that. So I'm going to go with a 9N so I don't add any more depth and deepness because your choice would be an 8 or a 9N. I would go with a 9N so we can keep it in that range of a 6 to a 9 if that makes sense. So do you see how you can customize blend your own colors to make sure that they last long? Now when you want to create a darker red, you want to use the darkest primary color. And what color is your darkest primary color? That's blue. So you want to use blues to create your darkest reds. When you add blue to red, that works best on levels two to a level five. So you're going to get like black cherries all the way to light auburn. So the cool thing with GK Oil Hair Color is not just that you're creating your own series, but you can actually give it their own names too. So now you can name it. So you want to make a black cherry, so you're going to want to use blue and red um, together. So example, blue plus red equals your red violet. So if you're at a level three, equal portions of three red red and equal portions of your eight eight, which is your violet, which is gonna give you a beautiful black cherry kind of finish to the hair. Um, and when you're at that deep of a color, um, you don't necessarily need to use your N. And why would you think you wouldn't have to add N to your color formula if you're working at a level three or a two or a one? You wouldn't need to use that because the hair that, that that's that dark has three parts red, three parts blue, and three parts yellow. So those are already kind of built, those are naturally happening with your hair. So you don't need to add ends when you're that low on the levels because that's what's naturally happening already if you remember back to the beginning of the presentation. Um, now you want to create a light auburn. So a light auburn, say at a level six you would use equal portions of 6RR and equal portions of your 88. So those two combined, the violets, those two combined together are gonna to give you a beautiful, nice auburn color. Now let's talk about gold bases. And when do you use golds to add into your formula? So you add golds in there when you wanna produce warmth and you wanna reflect the light back out to keep it from looking dull or drab. So remember, when you put blue in, it sucks the light to itself so it looks really dark which tends sometimes to look drab if you're above a level five. But when you add gold to your color, it flex it right back out. Um, so you can use gold all by itself if you want to. Um, you can use gold mixed with your ends or your N ends, because remember, when you mix gold and you mix natural together, you get a nice neutral gold. So you know, you're creating your own color series. You can use gold in your reds to reduce the intensity. So that gold is going to reflect that back out, so it can, it's going to reduce the intensity and make those really soft, beautiful colors. When you use gold plus green or violet, you're going to get a neutral blonde. If you're at levels six through seven and you're still talking like brunettes and, or the lightest of brunette, you use your, your, your uh, green or your violet with that, you're going to get a neutral brunette. When you get to level eight or higher, you have to use the least amount of ash possible to avoid green. Um, so you don't want to use ash when you get above levels eight. 
Um, so an example of that, let's talk about caramel brunette. You get that asked all the time in the salon. So a great formula for a caramel brunette is 10 ml of 5YO, 10 ml of 7YO. So you've got 20, gram, 20 milliliters of your gold, 10 ml of your 6N to give you the base that you need. So again, one more yellow, a red, and a blue, and then you're gonna add your 7-7 in there, which is your violet. It's gonna create you a beautiful tone of a caramel brunette. Now, when you're creating opaque brunettes, you have to, you absolutely have to use the color concentrates. So we talk about the color concentrates. I think a common misconception that colorists have when they look at the swatch book, they look at it and they're like, oh, it's yellow and it's red, and it's blue and it's violet. I don't have clients that want to be blue or violet, so I don't need those. You absolutely need to have those color concentrates for creating opaque color formulas. Um, so another example, uh, a warm caramel. If we want to create that, we're using 20 ml of a 6RO, 20 ml of a 6N, and you all know why to do that, right? Because we're putting our base and our anchor in there. And then you use 10 ml of your yellow or your gold concentrate. So you're seeing that we're using that concentrate to create the colors, the most popular, most asked for colors are utilizing those color concentrates. Now we say we want to make a violet natural. And we're going to use 20 ml of a 3N, and 20 ml of a 7.7, which is your violet. So you're using equal portions of that to create a violet natural. And again, these are, these are colors that clients, conservative clients ask for, but yet you're using that much of a violet series. So hopefully you understand how we're mixing these series together to create exactly what your clients are looking for. So to understand GK oil hair colors, to really understand what competitors are doing. And so, you know, just to briefly touch on what other companies are doing when we talk about pre-mixed colors. Some companies use green as their ash base. So if you're using the GK Oil Hair Color and you're replacing an ammonia line that you already have, um, you'll be very familiar already with what the background color is with the lines that you're currently using. So some of those lines create green as their anchor. How would you create green with GK Color? You would mix yellow and blue together. And so again, that's where your color concentrates come into play. Or if you're going a series higher of over a five, you would, you would mix your golds and your ash series together to create those background bases. Now, some companies use violet as their, ba as their um, ash base series or as their anchor. What would you use with GK? You would use blue plus red, level six or higher, then you're gonna use violet in place of, of, your, um, of your blue. So again, you have to know exactly what you're replacing. So if you're replacing an ammonia color, you need to know what that background color in that was, and that's what you're gonna use as your background color with GK to get the exact matches. Um, now some companies use blue as their anchor base. So what would you use with GK? You would use blue, right? So we recommend using that on levels six or lower. So again, you want to be, you want to know what you're using and how you're going to convert that over to create your own background colors. When in doubt for your background color, always use your N because that's one part red, one part yellow, and one part blue. So your ash base colors uh, are needed as the hair is lifted to higher to neutralize out any unwanted NRP in the tones in your hair. So any color, so as you're lifting, so when we're creating our redheads, NRP is our friend, right? So we always want to use our NRP for our redheads. But when we're creating ash tones of brunettes. As we're lifting, we're creating those ash tones. We need to know how to counteract the NRP. So always remember that any color that has blue in it is going to have some ash tone to that. Anytime you mix blue with either of the primary colors, whether it's red or it's yellow, you're going to make a cool ash base color. Um, blue is always dominant because it has the heaviest dye load. So that's why you want to be very careful using your blues over a level six. So you, that's, going to give, that's going to draw your colors in. Those would tend to make it look a little drab. So if you, want to, if you need to ash things out, once you get above a level six, you want to switch over to your ash series and not use the color concentrates because that's going to be too drab and too heavy for those formulas. So switch over to your ash series because those are a little lighter in your dye load. Um, so always remember your yellow plus your blue is going to equal your green. So if you need to make green, 
if, to, to neutralize something out, you want to use your series that's going to give you yellows and your blues to make that. Um, when we're talking about reds and purples, your violet, red and blue, that's going to create your violet. Again, the reason why you want to use violet concentrate in place of blue, once you go to level six and you move up a little bit higher, you're going to switch over to your violet concentrate because it's not as heavy as a dye load. It's a little bit lighter because it has that red in there and it's going to help you create perfect, beautiful formulas. Uh, so, you know, in summary, GK Oil Hair Color provides colors with a strong base of pure tone colors so you're able to create whatever you can possibly imagine, whatever your clients are requesting. Um, to successfully create formulas for brunettes and redheads, there, there's few key things that you always have to keep in mind. Um, so you always have to know where are you starting at, so you need to know what level you're, that you're at. Um, and again, as the rule of thumb, if you think she's a five and maybe she's a six, always go one level lower than what you think because um, that's going to ensure success for you. When we talk about starting point, you have to know how much gray she has. So where are you starting at? The next question that you're going to have to ask yourself is where are you going to go? That comes with client consultation. That comes with knowing what you're, you know, how are you going to get there? How are you going to choose a developer that's going to take you to where you're going to go? So you have to know where your end result is going to take you and how are you going to get there? How are you going to get there? That's going to be, when you answer how you're going to get there, that's going to tell you whether you're using 10 volume, 20 volume, 30 volume, or 40 volume. Maybe you have to pre-lighten her to get to what you need. So you'll have to decide how are you going to get there. And the final question that you have to ask yourself before you do your color formulation is when you do get there, what are you going to do? Are you going to neutralize it or are you going to enhance it? Um, so these are the four simple questions and always respecting the law of color and your color results are going to be the best possible colors that are in your market where your salon is at. Uh, thank you for attending the Red uh, Brunette program. Uh, we'll see you in our next color series. Thank you.